When it comes to planning out the shots for your film and video work, an important consideration is how you want your audience to feel emotionally about what they're seeing. There are, of course, many factors that will influence how they feel, from the music and set design to the performances and the editing. All will play their part in engaging the audience's emotions in the film. What we're going to look at in this tutorial, though, is how your shot choices can make an impact on your audience's emotions and reactions to your work. The starting point for getting this right is having your own unique, clear point of view about what exactly it is that you want to say about the material. And this is where you need to separate story from your own point of view about the characters, events and locations in the story. Once you understand what it is that you want to say about the characters, the events and the locations, which is your point of view on the material, you should then aim to reflect it in the shot choices that you make. Film is first and foremost a visual medium and the right choice of shots will help your audience to get a better sense of how you feel about the events that are unfurling on the screen. They'll feel that the piece is working visually for them, even if they aren't consciously aware of how that is happening. And remember folks, this applies to all types of film and video work, not just film. It doesn't matter whether you're dealing with an advert, a corporate promo, a music video, a dramatic short or a major film. The same rule applies. If you have a firm grasp on your own point of view of the piece, then you'll know how to choose your shots accordingly. For the examination of how point of view works visually in film, I'm going to look at two very contrasting films. From the independent sector in Britain, I've chosen Barbarian Sound Studio by Peter Strickland. And from the mainstream sector in America, I've chosen Fast Five by Justin Lin. Now you might think that these are odd choices to put side by side, but I'd recommend viewing both mainstream and independent films when it comes to developing your skills as a filmmaker, as you'll find it helps you develop your visual literacy. Let's start with the stories, and then we'll discuss point of view. The story of Barbarian Sound Studio goes as follows. A man is hired to mix the sound for a horror film, and during the process he has a mental breakdown. The story for Fast Five is equally simple. A gang of car thieves take on and defeat a local crime lord. The point of view of Barbarian Sound Studio is that the location, situation and people are oppressive. And the point of view of Fast Five is that some crime can be fun, freeing and rewarding. Once we understand these points of view, the visual choices made by the director and the director of photography seem logical and appropriate. In Barbarian Sound Studio, the visuals stick to a strict regimen of medium shots and close-ups. These choices help to heighten the feelings of claustrophobia and the sense of being trapped that the character feels. And on the rare occasions that we do get a long shot, and they are rare, the world still does not feel like an open and free space. Fast Five has a visual style that is almost the opposite of this. The usual close-ups and medium shots are used as a filmmaking standard, of course, but there are also liberal uses of long shots and framing devices that regularly show the characters with lots of space around them. Therefore, although the characters are often on the wrong side of the law and on the run, they're regularly shown as being free and in charge of their environment and the world around them. Indeed, when we are shown the environment, it is a large, open and big playground for them to exist and play in. 
Although both are very different films, the directors and directors of photography obviously had a clear point of view about the material and how it should be conveyed visually to the audience.